assume it's Oregon State. Well, make your pick and I'll tell you. Well, nonetheless, I, I, it, 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 don't, it don't really matter what, because I think Stanford's going to blow the doors wide open at the start. Kevin Hogan and that Stanford offense just gonna, has been really, really impressive to this year because nobody, I guess, thought Stanford would do this well. And so far, they've been proving everybody wrong. I think they'll continue. I don't see Colorado posing any threat. I think it'd be a 30-plus point win for Stanford. Interesting pick there, QC. I don't think they're going to get that high on Colorado. Colorado did beat Oregon State, which we know Oregon State hasn't done much this year. So, um, yeah, to answer your question, on if they don't tell me it's Oregon State, well, yeah, it is Oregon State that Colorado did beat this year. So, I think Stanford, they'll come out there and they'll play physical football like they've been modeling their team after for the last couple of years. I think Stanford's going to win this game over Colorado this year. And... I think they'll continue their undefeated season in the Pac-12. They have one loss, and we'll see what happens there as this uh, season keeps going along. And now this game has playoff implications, too. It's not a big marquee game, but, you know, it does have some value to it. It's an easy game to overlook. I know everybody's been focused on LSU Alabama, but this one's been – it deserves a little bit more attention. Vanderbilt versus number 10, Florida. Who you got, Juicy? Hmm, well, I disagree with you about playoff implications on that one. Well, at least for Vanderbilt, they have no shot. But uh, Florida, I don't really consider it a big game. The only thing you might get big out of it is if Florida wins, they clinch it. Well, they clinch the Eastern Division, the SEC. And I don't see... Vanderbilt really being a threat to Florida. I think Florida and and that stout defense they have along with the uh, uh, I can't remember that new quarterback's name. Uh, not Greer. But the, uh, the one not Greer. Um, I had him to my tongue. Uh, let's see. Uh, what's his name again? Oof. Trying to think, I know his name. Oh. Well, nonetheless, I still think that Florida offense and the way Florida been playing gonna be too much. For Teron me Harris. To Is his name Harris? Trayon. Uh, I'm not sure. Trayon Harris. Trayvon. Trayvon Harris. Something like that. Yeah. I think, I think Florida will win this one by about 21, 28 points. I don't uh, see uh, Vanderbilt winning this game either. And they're going to clinch the East. Yeah, I think that's – we predict this is what's going to happen, but this thing could be blown up in everybody's face if Vanderbilt would do the unthinkable and upset Florida. You got to look at all spectrums here, but uh, FPI has Florida winning this by like 93%. So – Vandy hasn't – in like 23 or 24 tries, it's been a very long time. Let's just leave it at that. But, you know. And I expect that trend to continue. I, I expect it to continue as well. I don't see. I'm, Vanderbilt has not much of a chance. But we'll see what happens. I got Florida winning this game. I don't think um, Vanderbilt's got what it takes to win this game here at all. So it's it's kind of sad to say that, but you know Vanderbilt they haven't been good the last couple of years. So give me Florida. Now a Big Ten game number nine Iowa versus Indiana. Who you got, Juicy? Versus who? Indiana. Uh, well, I think this game's gonna be relatively close. I think this game is going to be relatively close. Um, Indiana, they they played they played pretty well at times, like Ohio State. They played well against them. Iowa, I think Iowa's going to 
win this game, though, by about 14 points. I think it's going to be... I think that's fair to say about yeah. points because I know Indiana's got that good running back. He can run the ball. Jordan Howard's been pretty good for him, but I don't think he's going to be able to give him the win either. I think Iowa's going to win this game over Indiana. Indiana hasn't won a Big Ten game this year at all, so give me Iowa winning this game. Even though Indiana is 500 this year so far, they're 4-4 four and four in overall record, but uh, give me Iowa. Iowa could potentially get in this playoff, I believe. Even though they got a very weak schedule, if the cards play right for them, yeah, they got an they outside. Can sneak in there. They can sneak in there. I think they got TCU, Baylor in front of them, but they got to watch out for Oklahoma State though behind them. It's going to be kind of interesting to see how they play out here. Too, if they get to that Big Ten game and they manage to pull an upset over Ohio State, who we think is going to make it in there, or Michigan State. Mm-hmm. It's going to be interesting. So, if, skip over number eight. Yeah, <laughs> ain't that obvious? Skip over number eight. Go to number seven. I think seven. I don't think seven's playing this week. If I remember right, I think that bye week. Seven's off this week, huh? I think so. That'd be nope, no, 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 nope, nope. There's one in the top ten. I think has a bye week, but it ain't seven. It's Michigan State versus Nebraska. We were just talking about them. So, I got Michigan State win this game. Connor Cook, enough said. Nebraska has been in free fall this year. And, yeah, Nebraska 3-6, and 1-4 in the Big Ten. So, give me Michigan State to win this game. Yeah, we skip over number six because they already played. Baylor beat Kansas State 31-24, so congrats to them. So we move to number five, Notre Dame versus Pittsburgh. Who you got in this game, Juicy? Wait, say that again? Notre Dame versus Pittsburgh. Uh, I kind of, you know, I'm going to agree with Vegas. I think 10 points is a good, fair assessment. I don't think it's going to be as big as you think it's going to be. Uh, yeah, give me the Irish, though. I think Notre Dame is going to do what they have to do. Kaiser's been good for him this year, and Fuller's been a pretty good receiver. So, whenever he can touch the ball, he's, there's like he's a long, he's like a long ball threat, you know. So, give me uh, Pittsburgh. I mean, uh, Irish, I mean. I was about to change picks, and I wasn't about to realize it. And we skipped four. About to change it right there. I thought I said I already picked the Irish to win this game. Whoa, watch out. <laughs> yeah, so we skipped four, and we got to skip two, and we got to skip yeah. one. <laughs> and we got to skip one, too. Yeah, that's what I said. So we go all the way up to number three, which is Minnesota versus number three, Ohio State. I got Ohio State winning this game here. Ezekiel Elliott. Been pretty good for him this year. JT Barrett and all of them. The whole crew. I think they'll win this game. Uh, Minnesota. Yeah, he did. I think he's got a... No, but he's only... He got arrested, but I think he... Yeah, speaking of that, getting arrested there. Um, yeah, he got arrested on a DWI charge, DUI charge, something like that. One of his alcohol was influenced behind that. He did get arrested... I don't think he's playing this week. I think he's playing next week. So, Cardale Jones is going to probably get the start. So, yeah. so I think they're good either way. So, I think they're going to be good either way. Um, but, yeah, uh, his uh, penalty, which I think is complete bogus. I think something more should have been handed down to somebody. But um, I think he's uh, has to rescind his scholarship for the summer of next year, which is complete stupid. Because, I mean, if he doesn't attend class at all, there's that's nothing at all. I mean, that's just that's yeah. not really giving a pen. I mean, a penalty to anybody. Yeah, I don't, I don't think. Uh, I don't think. 
Ohio State's going to have a problem in this game either. I think e- e- even I mean, even though it's not uh, JT Bear starting, court that they're drifting about uh, for Ohio State is Courtney Young Jones had a lot of playing time too. And he, he, he even played in the playoffs in the national championship game last year. So I don't think Ohio State's got nothing to worry about. With, uh, with, with any of their quarterbacks? I think Ohio State is good. I mean, uh, they deserve to be in the top four. I, I Because they're a national champion from last year. Uh, that's kind of one of my things about it. If you're an undefeated national champion from last year, then... Until you lose. Until you lose. Uh, I think it's a fair assessment, even though you can kind of give them too much credit for whatever they do, so... We'll see what happens. All right, Juicy. Here's the time. Here's where all the hate mail comes for every single part of the year. <laughs> you don't pick somebody's team. They get really offended. And we know how them college football fans love their team. But I say we're going to start with the third biggest game this week because uh, number 16, Florida State versus number one, Clemson. Who you got in this game, Juicy? Dalvin Cook from Florida State has been pretty good for him this year. Oh, I, not to mention Dal- Dalvin Cook was a Heisman candidate for Florida State, but um, I don't think Florida State's going to win this game. Clemson, Deshaun Watson, uh, Travis Scott, those guys, they're going to get do what they got to do to win this game here. Deshaun Watson, I think, should be a Heisman contender. I think he's had a pretty good year to kind of, you know, get some hype about that. You know, he's a pretty good leader for this team. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be raining in Clemson, so you won't see much of a pat. Well, I, you, I say that, but you know, rain's going to affect the ball no matter how you play it. But, yeah, I think if it would be sunny, I think it would be more than that. I think 21, 28 if it's sunny. I kind of agree with what you said there. 14, 17 points should be a good win for Clemson. I think it's going to be that about around that range there if I had to do predict what's going to happen in that game. I think Clemson's a pretty good team this year. They deserve to be number one. In my opinion, they had you because you know you're going to change two and four. I mean, what they did with LSU and Alabama makes perfect sense to me because the way this schedule is going to break out is you're going to have teams playing each other, but once you get down, they're going to knock each other out of the playoff. You're going to have, let's say, if Alabama beats LSU, LSU's knocked out, or LSU beats Alabama. Same thing there. Then you got this game here, Florida State and Clemson. Clemson beats Florida State, they're out. If you have TCU and Oklahoma State, they're both undefeated. And whoever wins that, they knock each other out. It's That's how this is going to play out. So it's going to be very interesting to see how both these games, or actually all three of these games, play out this week because that's all they are. All they are is just um, knocking each other out. Mm-hmm. Yep, so I got Clemson winning that. <clears throat> Long story short. Number eight, TCU versus number fourteen, Oklahoma State. Who you got, Juicy? Uh, I actually have a little wager with this game. Really? I have TCU winning this game. Yes, mm-hmm. I have a wager with the coworker who swears up and down that Oklahoma State's gonna win. And uh, I tell, I say Oklahoma State hasn't really played. They have not. Beaten. Oklahoma State has not beaten one team. On their schedule with a winning record yet this year, and they haven't really proven to know. They haven't really played nobody to really prove it. 